Thanks a lot for invitation. So I'm going to complete a presentation of Pascal. Um, and I'm mainly focused on uh, what are the story of DigiMu developments and what uh, will be uh, the next evolution of the DigiMu software. Finally, what we develop today in CMF in terms of numerical modeling. So, uh, as already explained, this development are realized in truth, uh, two main projects, DigiMu and Opal Share, which are industrial share. You can find uh, the, the different uh, industrials uh, involved in these projects. And uh, as already explained, the Pascal already explained the difference between main field model and, and full field model on connection with forge simulation, for example. And main idea is uh, to be able to take into account uh, physics, the good physics at uh, the mesoscale, and finally to take into account particular topology of the microstructure in the grain size prediction. And of course, with this development, also to propose enhanced better main field model uh, usable uh, through uh, the Forge software. So uh, in CMF, we develop mainly uh, one numerical method, level set formulation for oxidation modeling. But you can find another approach in the state of the art. Uh, my point of view is that uh, main interest of level set formulation comparatively to the state of the art is that when you go to the literature and you seek for a publication concerning full field modeling, uh, of oxidization, what you will find generally is the fact to play with, for example, one billion grains in polycrystal and infinite thermal treatment and study the steady state of the microstructure. But of course, this kind of example is not interesting for you, for industrial application, but because when you have hot, met hot metal forming, what is important is the transient evolution or not the steady state uh, of the microstructure. And finally, if you look to the literature, you will find that 99% of publications are not adapted to hot metal forming. And uh, it, it is one perspective of the DGMU development to, to, to give an answer to, to this aspect. Uh, another difficulty, of course, is to be able to, to deal with uh, large deformation, uh, which is uh, clearly uh, a, a powerful uh, level set is a power powerful tool for, for this aspect. And I'm going to show you these, these elements. So uh, now I come back to the fact that uh, with, uh, with uh, Pascal, we have seen that we are able to generate uh, 2D or 3D statistical microstructure like that in level set formulation. And the idea is also to propose finite element meshing and remeshing strategy to describe this microstructure. And you can see very fine mesh adapt, for example, uh, at grain interface, but also at second phase particle interface for uh, Anconel 718 here. And it will be also uh, a future capability of the DGMU software to take into account not only spherical second phase particle, but real image for, uh, for your second phase particle population, for example, in nickel, nickel based super alloys. Okay? Uh, another aspect is that we work also to the fact to be able to immerse 3D experimental microstructure in DGMU simulation and to compare with in situ. Uh, experimental uh, data, and it's, uh, it's the case here, we can see a collaboration uh, with Calquil in Germany, and the idea, it's a 3D simulation uh, with level set technique for when growth and comparison with 3D in situ experimental data. And the fact to be immersed, 3D uh, experimental data uh, will be also available in the DGMU software in uh, following versions. No. Um, here you can find, uh, so I'm sorry, I will not focus only on equation, but uh, one particularity of level set formulation is to have a kinetic, uh, a kinetic formulation for the grain modal immigration. And you can find two uh, main pressures describing uh, this grain modal immigration. One, which is defined by the stored energy due to, uh, due to deformation, due to the fact that we store dislocation during plastic deformation, and one which is mainly dedicated to uh, capillarity effect, minimization of the grain modal energy. One on a topic in the state of the heart is to be able to, uh, to finally have a clear description of what are the different physical parameters in this kinetic equation, mobility and grain modal energy. Okay, uh, it's uh, uh, not topic in experimental way to be able to use 3D experimental data to have a clear definition of these uh, 
uh, of these uh, data, uh, but also of this coefficient. But it's also a hot topic in terms of numerical simulation, because when you want to introduce some anisotropy in the simulation, the simulations are much more complex. Today, in DigiMu software, what we use is isotropic definition of this parameter, depending on the temperature, for example. But the future is to take into account also uh, the misorientation, the normal to the grain interface, and uh, another parameter like solid drag in mobility. And we work on this aspect. Uh, so now, if I come back to a story of the DGMU development, you can find here a simulation which was realized 14 years ago. And at the beginning, we have only uh, works on static crystallization without grain growth. And uh, this uh, framework was improved to take into account minimization of grain boundary energy by taking into account grain growth. And it's indeed, it's uh, here discontinuous uh, crystallization modeling. I come back to the question of Alexi. Uh, Gaillac in the previous presentation. The idea, if you want to simulate continuous uh, crystallization, for example, the idea is that you must take into account uh, orientation of nucleus to say that this nucleus appears by uh, reorganization, uh, lo local organization and prediction of the orientation of these new grains. And we work on this topic now to be introduced in next version of the DGMU software. Most recently, we have improved uh, our framework to be able to simulate this kind of deformation with dynamic evolution of the microstructure. Uh, and in fact, it was possible, the main aspect was to be able to limit uh, computational cost of this kind of simulation. And uh, these developments are quite recent because uh, I think that we, this simulation has only two years, was realized two years ago. Now, uh, in the DGMU, uh, in the DGMU uh, framework, like in Opal Share, we work a lot on nickel bar superalloys. And as explained by Pascal, the main difficulty is to take into account the growth phase particle without any assumption concerning driving uh, smith zener driving pressure uh, in, in where you have interaction between grain interface and second phase particle. And it's one advantage of level set formulation is to avoid any assumption uh, for this Smith-Zener pinning pressure. And you can see here uh, a 3D example for Anconet 7Y8 of uh, limiting grain size due to the presence of second phase particle. But here, one limit of this kind of simulation is that the second phase particle are assumed static. Okay, and if you want to, uh, to, to simulate a near solvus experience, you must take into account evolution of second phase particles. Okay, so sorry for problem in equation, I will not develop it, it maybe it will be better. Uh, but the idea of, of this slide is only to explain that in current version of the DGMU software, mechanical parts are quite simple in terms of low to defined uh, evolution of dislocation density. And now what we try to do is to use the same uh, framework that the DGMU formulation, but by using crystal plasticity simulation for the mechanical part. And the idea, of course, is to take into account uh, crystallographic information for all grains in uh, the deformation prediction and to improve uh, our criterion concerning position of nucleus and uh, appearance of nucleus. And you can see an example here of DGMU simulation with crystal passive uh, sim formulation for a torsion case. And it's not a metallic uh, sample, but it's a geological one. And it was realized by, the simulation was realized by two of our PhD students. But uh, of course, with this kind of simulation, uh, mechanical predictions are much more precise that actual uh, DGMU uh, software formulation, but of course numerical cost is not the same. Okay? Time calculation could be five times more important than actual DGMU simulation. But maybe the idea with Pascal is to propose in, in, in future two versions of the DGMU software. One advanced with crystal plasticity facilities and a classical formulation with simplified uh, equation for mechanical parts. Okay? So it's a uh, first perspective of our current developments. Another hot topic for microstructure is to be, to be able to take into account what we call special grain boundaries. Okay? The main idea is that if you have, for example, here an experience of grain growth, and I will explain that blue interface are a uh, twin interface in this case, but one hot topic in, in the state of the art is the fact to say, is it really important uh, 
to take into account orientation on, for example, wet Shockley formulation to describe the Gwen Bunawi energy in Gwen growth experiments. Okay? Now, what we know that with our development is that if you have only a uh, texture material, but not a too important texture, and you have only a small anisotropy of Gwen Bunawi energy due to misorientation. Finally, to take, it to take into account this anisotropy is not interesting because your simulation will be much more complex, and finally, your prediction will not be really different than if you perform isotropic simulation. Okay? But now the answer is not the same if you have what we call special Gwen Bunda with, with very low energy, like twin interface, for example. And we know that you can, all of us, we can find, we can work with some materials uh, where the number of twins are really important. Okay? And here you have an example of a study, recent study, for, uh, for nickel bass superalloys. It was Anconel 718 here. And the idea was to perform Gwen growth simulation by taking into account twin interface or not, and to compare DGMU prediction. Okay, and here you have only it's some uh, numerical sample with different as assumption concerning the model used uh, to describe the Gwen Bundawi energy. Uh, you can find DGMU simulation, and maybe the most interesting here is what we call wet chocolate plus, which is like to have wet chocolate dependence for the definition of the Gwen Bundawi energy and presence of twin interface in blue. And if we try uh, to compare, for example, grain size distribution or mean grain size, what you can obtain is this kind of prediction with DGMU. Here you have the mean grain size evolution with time, it's only thermal treatment, and you can find actual DGMU simulation, and here what we call uh, the green is the prediction of mean grain size uh, by taking into account uh, twin interface. Okay, and you have the same discussion with Gwen Bunawi energy. These developments are now, uh, we think, robust and usable in DGMU formulation, and it will be integrated in future version uh, of the DGMU software. Another aspect uh, is the fact, uh, as already explained, is uh, recent nickel bass superalloys developed by Aubert Duval, and it's, uh, this experiment was realized in close collaboration uh, with Jérôme Blaiseau, which is here, uh, which is here today. And the main idea is, for example, here to the fact to discuss to discuss the fact to take into account where I shape for the second phase particle or not, but also to discuss what could could appear in terms of limiting limiting grain size if uh, you have a, a clear evolution of uh, the second phase particle. What you can see here is prediction of grain size distribution with static second phase particle on the real shape of the second phase particle. And what you can see is classical uh, pinning of the microstructure during a thermal treatment due to the presence of population of second phase particle. But uh, what we have recently developed is two new methods to be able to simulate in the same way uh, Gwen Buddha migration, but also evolution of second phase particle. Okay? And the main idea uh, is to use uh, these, uh, these new, uh, new, uh, f new possibilities to simulate solid solid phase transformation and at first application to simulate evolution of second phase particle uh, in uh, nickel bass superalloys. Okay? So, and what you can see, of course, wha what it could be important is that when you have a clear evolution of this second phase particle population, uh, you will, uh, at the beginning, you can have a static uh, Gwen Budawi network, but by dissolution of this second phase particle, you will obtain a new migration uh, of this grain interface. And of course, it's uh, an important option if you want to test some materials near the solvus temperature. Okay? So, uh, another current development uh, in CMF is the fact that if you, if you look to meshing strategy in DGMU software in 2D or in 3D, you will see that in 2D, you, uh, Pascal already uh, shown you some picture, that we have particular meshing and remeshing operation at grain interface to optimize the precision near the grain interface and to use coarse mesh inside the grain. Okay? But uh, this possibility is interesting in 2D. So the idea is to say, okay, it uh, enables to allow computational cost and remeshing operation, the cost of remeshing operation is limited. But it's not the case in 2D. If you take DGMU version actually in 2D, you will have static mesh. Okay, why? Because we are able to perform this kind of meshing operation in 3D, but the cost is too important. Okay? 
And finally, we work a lot on the fact to uh, propose you uh, more and more fast simulation in 3D to increase, for example, the number of grains that you can take into account in your polycrystal. And for that, we think that uh, actual meshing and remeshing strategy is not the good way to, uh, for example, increase by a factor 10 uh, calculation velocity of our simulation. And what we develop is to continue to use uh, classical possibility of level set formulation, but with particular conform and Lagrangian description for the Gwen Buddha Wim equation. And it's this, this simulation uh, were realized uh, by one of our PhD students, Sebastian Flores, which work on this topic. And what you have here is a classical DGMU simulation with Gwen growth for a stainless steel. But for example, for this 2D simulation, we go uh, approximately 50 times faster than actual DGMU simulation with the same precision. Okay? On 2D, it works. Today, it works in 2D, not in 3D. But we think that we work on this development uh, to really have uh, faster simulation in 3D. It's ne in next version of the DGMU, uh, of the DGMU software. So, and I'm not going to present this slide because the main idea was already developed by uh, Pascal. Uh, and it illustrates the works of Baptiste Flippons to the fact that we work a lot on uh, a normalized and an optimized procedure to calibrate parameter in the DGMU simulation. Okay, so thank you for your listening and I'm available for questions.